Joe, one of the first things that we needed to do when we decided we would start this project and development of this eye was figure out the shape. And we wanted to do something from the start to scratch and work from the ground up and make this different than anything that had been there before. And so it would be the best eye on the market. Can you tell us a little bit how we determined shape for this eye? Well, we certainly started from the ground up. Uh, started with a, uh, a fresh deer eye and uh, looked at its shape, actually made some castings, uh, made some modifications, and uh, came up with a, uh, with a, a lens shape, which I feel uh, is, is as accurate as, as humanly possible. Right. And I know then you challenged our artists to come up with some colors and be able to blend the colors so we got the correct color colorations in the eye. Also, we, we didn't want technology to hold us back, and we wanted to be able to have that color add depth to the eye and incorporate some new technology into the eye so that, that it could reflect light like an actual deer eye. If you could tell us a little bit about the coloration here and what we tried to do and, and how we tried to blend the colors to, to get the correct coloration in the deer eye. Well, there are a lot of advantages nowadays with uh, digital uh, photography as well as uh, the computer age. and. Uh, I uh, was able to go into the deer pen and actually uh, take some very good close-ups of several different deer. And this eye is kind of the average of the texture and the uh, detail of the iris of uh, many different deer. But we feel it's, it really shows a lot of the characteristics of the real deer eye. Right. And, and kind of the next thing that we hear ever since the eye has been introduced into the industry is people having a, a, a little bit of issue with what's the front and what's the back of the eye because it's so much different than any other eye that's been in the industry. Um, maybe you can walk us through what the correct way to set the eye is, but before that, what is the actual front of the eye versus the back? Well, let me hand that to you, Chad, for a second. I'm going to go back and start here and show uh, the actual deer eye. This is a fresh specimen. and. As you can see, the back is more pointed. If you think of it as an egg, the pointed end of the egg is the back of the eye, and uh, the, the rounded end uh, that's not quite as pointed, that is the front. And I know there's a lot of uh, uh, problems in, in, in deciding which is front and which is back. When you actually look at the, at the eye itself, uh, there are a couple of things that you can look at. Uh, if you feel the front of the eye, it is, it is it's actually smooth. There's no uh, indentation where the iris and the sclera uh, meet. So it is, it is smooth. Also, uh, in, in just looking at the shape, the pointed end there again is the back of the eye. And the, the third thing uh, is that there's more white in the back than the front. So the front has less white. The mask is slid forward uh, purposely so that when it's inserted into the of the deer, uh, you don't get the sclera band cutting down through the, uh, the front vision of the eye. So it looks like the live deer. All right, and, and one of the newest things we did, if you, when you look into the iris of this eye, you see some lines and some, some ridges like in, in the eye, and that was put in to give this thing a 3D effect and add some depth and contrast in the color. Um, when you look at a real deer eye, Joe, I know you see some of the way the light, the light hits the eye and bounces back out. And um, that was one of the goals we, we were trying to accomplish by putting these lines in the eye. Absolutely. Uh, it really uh, catches light and detracts. And, and just uh, with a given uh, head on the wall, uh, you can see a lot of depth in the eye. And that's, that's something I'm most excited about is that uh, not only is the pupil placed uh, towards the surface so you don't get that last look, but uh, those lines uh, that are put into the back of the eye are actually catching the light, and, and they're put in there very specifically because they are the detail that we saw in the live deer. Right. Um, why don't we set one in the, in the uh, mannequin here and show kind of what your technique is for, for setting them out? Oh, I'd love to. First, we're going to take some critter clay and put it in the, the back of the eye uh, with just a slight slight bit of excess so I can put the eye into the socket and wiggle the eye back and forth until I, I can feel that it's set all the way down and it's very important all the way down touching the form about the only way you can set the eye wrong is to get too much clay behind it and get it uh, so it doesn't seat 
all the way onto the form itself. You take a, a light, and another thing, I prefer the lighter version. This eye comes in a dark version and a lighter version. I like the lighter version because it shows the iris uh, definition and the detail, and it also is a little bit easier to set because you can see the pupil uh, quite easily. Now what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the pupil and I want the front of the pupil ever so slightly elevated. In other words, so there's just a slight angle. It's, it's, it's almost dead flat, but if anything, the front corner is just a hair high. Okay. Secondly, uh, we're going to model the eye in, and I always profess to use good references. So this is the particular deer that I intend to model. This is a front view and a side view. It's got some very uh, specific high points and low points, which makes it an easy eye to choose as far as uh, setting and modeling in. I'll lay those there. I'm going to take just a little bit of clay, and I'm going to fill the gap of the eye to the form of the bottom. And then simply take and cut, cut it clean. Now, the bottom is done. I'm going to take the top, and we're going to put a little bit of a line of clay over the front of the eye and going over the top. Then I'll take a couple more lines, and I'm going to start this angle that I see in this picture, kind of a straight angle. Now, this is just one particular uh, style or expression of an eye, but I like it because it has some very specific points that we can show you. secondary piece of clay and lay it right down and kind of create that straight angle. And then with my finger I'm going to feather and I take just a little bit of moisture and put it on my finger to smooth things up. And you can see we've already begun to get that shape. Take a brush. I like to use a brush, a soft brush, just slightly moistened so that I can smooth the clay up and do a quite a bit of a shaping of the clay with a brush. You notice I kind of flip the moisture off the brush. If you get this critter clay too wet, it um, doesn't make the job any easier. It's hard to model mud. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put a, a crease above the eye where the eyelid will fit into. Move it up. And then I put a very small roll of clay, very small, as small as you can roll it out with your fingers without falling apart around the bottom and kind of shape that bottom. And we'll smooth that up. And then all we have left to do is clean the eye off. And we're going to have a nice alert Nice alert eye, front view, and let's turn it to the side, and a side view, and that'll mount up real well. 